We were created for a purpose by an awesome, all-powerful, self-existing creator. Have you ever considered how arrogant a people would have to be to thumb their nose at such a creator's purpose for creating them? Or, or how arrogant they would be to reject his instructions? Yet this is what has happened by nearly all who he gave life to. It is pure arrogance for man to reject their creator's instructions. Who are we to do so? Can any of us add one nanosecond to our lives if he does not allow it? But some of you ask, how do we know that the instructions are from him? This really is simple to discern once you examine the evidence that he gave us. His creation testifies to his righteousness. He put the opposite of his righteousness here on earth to testify to it to us as well. When you consider his creation and consider that he put us here and gave us life in the flesh and that he gave us free will, it would be flat arrogant to not think that we're here for a purpose. And if we're here for a purpose, it would be flat arrogant to not seek out his purpose for us. If we really examine the evidence of good versus evil and the love that his creation testifies to in relation to an overall purpose for us being here, it is easy to discern which instructions are from him and which are from the adversary. It is actually arrogance on our part to not seek out his instructions and to go our own way deciding right from wrong for ourselves. It is vanity gone wild. He told us to seek him while he may be found. Just consider this instruction even. How could this instruction not come from a creator that created us for a purpose? But did you seek him? Or did you seek after who other people said that he was or who you wanted him to be? If we are humble enough to realize that apart from him we are nothing and that we are temporal, and if we desire to be found in agreement with him and his purpose, then our, and then our lives can become about his desire and his purpose. But is this what has happened? Is your life really about his desire and, and his purpose for creating you? Or do you decide right from wrong for yourself and mix in your own desires? In Deuteronomy 6, we read, starting in verse, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, Yehweh Elohim is one Yehweh, and you shall love Yehweh Elohim with all of your heart and with all of your life and with all of your dil diligence. And these words which I command you this day will be in your heart, and you will sharpen your children with them and talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. His instructions are to be a way of life 24-7. This is because he gave them for a purpose. How vain would one have to be to ignore or reject the instructions that he gave us? Yet he allowed for us to go our own way and to reject him. He purposed to build his family from those who would hearken to him and he let all others go their own way. The really crazy thing is, those who went their own way think that he owes them something. Their false worship to him mocks his purpose for creating them. They live and serve him like he owes them eternal life apart from his purpose for creating them. He created us to become as he is or to be made in his likeness. He did not create us to decide right from wrong for ourselves and to go after the desires of our hearts apart from his path. He gave us the ability to do so, but this was not why we were created. Consider this commandment to walk, to talk of his words from the time that we, that we get up until we go to bed and even then to meditate on them in the night watches. How do today's lifestyles fit into these instructions? How do things like sports or hobbies or countless other frivolities of life fit into living and breathing his word? What do these things have to do with why we were created? Do you really think that these things are the abundant life that Yeshua came and shed his blood so that you can have? No, the truthfulness of life comes from us being completed in our Creator's image and becoming his family with those around us. The abundance is through him. Everything else is temporal and fleeting. Any relationship that we have apart from one that leads to becoming his eternal family is meaningless. And it is vain to think that we are here for any other reason but to be found in his favor, doing his will. He wants us to delight in him and to delight in one another as we walk together with him. 
Any other path leads to the lake of fire. It is sick to walk hand in hand with another, happily skipping along on a path that leads to being destroyed for eternity. It is darkness to walk in such arrogance as this. Let me make up a happy family scenario for you for an example. Husband and wife live in suburbia America, living the good life. Husband makes six figures and only has to work 40 hours or less a week in a stress-free job so he has plenty of time for his family and he even spends it with them as he should. And the wife does not have to work so she is ready on the spot for her three children, for their three children, attending to their needs, and fixing them their lunches and playing with them and such. And they have the typical modern abundant life. The boy is in Little League and he has his other sports and such and the girls have their activities. But they are heavily involved in the false religion of Christianity and they are living lies and teaching a path that leads to the lake of fire to their children. Is this the abundant life that we are to have? Or is this a life of hypocrisy and arrogance because they are rejecting their creator's instructions? This family is living in the darkness apart, apart from the light. And this is evil. They're rejecting our Creator's purpose for giving, for giving them life. We are here in the flesh for just a short season to choose to be molded by our Creator to His, by His blueprint, not one of our own choosing. Anything else is vanity. I will give you another example. There certainly is nothing wrong with a woman knitting clothes. After all, we need clothing. But if the woman is knitting away and losing her mind and the frivolousness of life, then how is she using that time to draw closer to her Creator? Anything that is not about becoming as our Creator is and, and doing His desire is meaningless. And this is where our focus needs to be, even when we're going through the day-to-day -day functions of life, like knitting clothes. One person asked me a while back, what do I do for fun? I delight in my Creator and His Son. Why would I want a distraction from this? Television, video games, sports, etc. are just distractions to why we were created. In times past, families doing these things together was, uh, meaning doing things, excuse me, families doing things together was a way of life. Of course, they weren't watching television, video games, and stuff like that. I said that came out wrong, but the families doing things together was a way of life. They lived together. And through living together, the truth could be talked about and lived as, as a way of life as they walk through the days. And relationships could be based on truth and helping one another to live to be found in agreement with our Maker. Our relationships with one another are to revolve around living the truth together, helping one another become His children for eternity. In doing so, true and everlasting love is found in the relationships. Everybody has the same goal, which is to be found in our Creator's favor so that we can have eternal life together with Him. What an, awesome, what an awesome family this would be. No matter how happy that any of you are in the flesh or how good things look on the surface, if you are living a lie, you are living a temporal life. And this is not good. It is shameful. It is the truth that delivers us into eternal life in our Creator's family. We cannot live lies and be found in His favor. His truth is the only path that He will walk with us on. With any other path that we choose, he hides his face from us. And it is arrogance to choose another path other than the path that the all-powerful, self-existing Creator gave us to walk with him on. To think that our life is supposed to be based on what we want to do and what we desire apart from our Creator's desire is a vain thing. The world truly is vanity gone wild. This is why he is sending his wrath to purge the vanity of man out. The arrogance of man will be brought low. He is telling you to humble yourself before him and to turn to his path and to delight in him and to delight in one another who will also walk with him. His path is to be a way of life that we live 24-7. He wants us living it together with those around us. He has declared that this year that we're in is, is one of his seventh year annual Sabbaths. Do you even care about his desire for you this year? And his other instructions? He wants us in his family business and building his family is his family business. He wants us engaged in helping him continue to build his family. Repent, his kingdom is at hand.